Now we will take a look at muscle metabolism or how the muscle cell will produce ATP necessary to contract. We have three different types that we use for the muscle. Creatinine phosphate, anaerobic glycolysis, and cellular respiration. Here are the way those activities happen. The fastest form of ATP production will be creatinine phosphate. We need ADP and creatinine. When creatinine phosphate happens, we create ATP. And there you have ATP. Anaerobic glycolysis. If anybody's ever had muscle cramping, this is where lactic acid builds up in the blood of the muscle and can cause a rather unpleasant burning. So here we actually create two ATP, relatively quick production of ATP through this type of production. The long form, so several minutes to hours, is going to be aerobic respiration or cellular respiration. This is through the Krebs cycle and electronic transport chain in the mitochondria. This is where we're producing up to 32 ATP. So lots of energy here. Okay. Muscle fatigue, so in other words, how the muscle is going to wear out or not necessarily work properly. So inadequate release of calcium from that sarcoplasmic reticulum. If we do not have enough calcium or we do not have the right activation to release that calcium, we will have muscle fatigue because the muscle will not be able to work at its proper rate. Depletion of creatinine phosphate, oxygen, and nutrients. Simply not having the material to create energy will cause muscle fatigue. Buildup of lactic acid and ADP. So if we do not rid that muscle of waste from ATP production, we can have muscle fatigue as well. Insufficient release of acetylcholine, that neurotransmitter at the neuromuscular junction. So if we are not communicating properly with that muscle, the muscle will fatigue or not work at its proper rate. Oxygen consumption after exercise. So oxygen debt. How to restore. So why do we breathe heavily after exercising? It is because of oxygen debt. So we need to replenish that creatinine phosphate storage in the muscle for later use and creation of ATP. We convert that lactic acid into pyruvate so it can be used for later production. And then we reload oxygen onto myoglobin. This is going to be the big one. This is why we are breathing very heavily. Control of muscle tension. So here we're going to speak on motor units. So this is going to be how our muscle is going to contract, whether for use in smaller movement or larger movements. So we're going to have those motor units controlled by a neuron. But the strength of a contraction is depending on how many of those motor units are going to be activated at one time. So a more detailed movement, so like writing something, picking up a pencil, we're going to have less muscle fibers per motor unit. So more of a gross movement, say like running, we're going to have a greater amount of muscle fibers per motor unit so we can create greater force at a larger capacity. So you can compare these to uh, if you are trying to get a specific job done. If you need a cake de decorated, for example, you only want a few people working on that cake to get that detailed scenario. If you are trying to 
push a car up a hill, you are wanting to have a large amount of muscle fibers or people to help create that movement, which would be a gross movement. Okay, recruitment. So this is simply saying we are not recruiting every motor unit in a muscle all at one time. We can have five fibers per unit, seven, 12. Again, depends on the type of movement we're wanting to create, but we will see we alternate activation of those motor units. Okay, so weakest motor units will be recruited first. This is going to cause stronger motor units to be more of a backup. So if we go to pick up a bottle of water, we want the weaker motor units to start off because I don't know about you, but I would rather not smack my face with a bottle of water because I recruited the stronger motor units first. Okay, motor units will contract alternately, alternatively, or alternately to sustain contractions for a longer period of time. An example would be if you were trying to dig a deep hole. You would take per turns with a partner for digging so you can take a break and you can keep the process going for a longer period of time rather than both of you working at the same time and wearing out at the same time. Twitch contraction, so this is just a contraction of a muscle. We have a nerve that sends an action potential or an impulse, and this is going to cause that muscle to have a quote-unquote twitch or a quick contraction. And you can see we have a latent contraction, relaxation, and refractory period. So latent is more of a relaxed state of the muscle. Contraction, we are actually contracting that muscle. And then during relaxation, we'll have the refractory period in which we cannot have another contraction. Okay. So with these twitch contractions, we have uh, wave summation. So if a second action potential can trigger another muscle contraction, before the first one is completely finished, we result in a stronger contraction. Unfused tetanus is going to be some relaxation will occur between these action potentials, but for the most part that muscle stays contracting. Fused tetanus, there is no relaxation between the twitches. So here's an example of that. One action potential, a single twitch. Two action potentials adding together, this is wave summation. Unfused tetanus, so this is continual contraction with some relaxation. But multiple action potentials close enough together, we never allow the muscle to relax. So this is the tetanus that everybody fears. This will cause a muscle to continually stay in spasm until the action potentials cease. Okay. Muscle tone. Uh, we, due to weak involuntary contractions of muscle, motor units, we keep a certain tone of our muscles, even if we are not voluntarily trying. This helps stabilize joints in the body. In skeletal muscle, again, helps keep everything firm without producing any movement. Smooth muscle, we retain pressure on the contents of the hollow organs that we are in, so such as blood pressure in blood vessels. Isotonic versus isometric contractions. Isotonic, uh, the tension is consistent, so we are not contracting any harder, but we are moving the muscle. Concentric versus eccentric, isotonic contractions. Concentric is shortening the muscle, so bringing 
So the act of picking up a book, shortening the muscle, eccentric, lengthening the muscle would be laying the book down with a constant tension in that muscle. Isometric, the muscle is going to contract, but it does not change length. So if we were to try and pull open a door that is stuck, we are keeping constant tension, but the muscle is not moving. Seen here in these photos. Types of muscle fibers in skeletal muscle, slow oxidative versus fast oxidative, glycolytic and fast glycolytic. Slow oxidative, we have more oxygen found in that muscle fiber all the way to fast glycolytic, we have very little oxygen. So the more oxygen we have, the longer that muscle can that muscle fiber can work. The less oxy oxygen, the least amount of work it will do. Stretching is good. We are actually stretching tendons of the muscle. We are lengthening those to create better movement of that muscle. During strength training, whenever we are increasing muscle size, we are increasing the microfilaments of the fiber. This is hypertrophy. Rather than increasing the number of muscle fibers, we are simply increasing the size of the existing muscle fibers. So cardiac muscle, again, we are in an arrangement where we are connected by intercalated discs. This helps us create a conical shape for the heart so those muscle fibers can contract all at once, squeezing the blood in one direction at a time. Smooth muscle, on the other hand, we start slowly and last longer. So in the GI tract, blood vessels, we can slowly contract so we continue the movement and we do not exhaust or cause muscle fatigue. So the way muscle, smooth muscle fibers are connected, we kind of intertwine. And as you can see here, we are able to shorten during contraction, and we do have some lengthening during relaxation. Okay, clinical notes, regeneration of muscle tissue. Again, hypertrophy is a enlarging, enlargement of the existing cells. Hyperplasia is actually increasing the number of muscle cells. This is not commonly a normal situation. Smooth muscle, on the other hand, we are able to regenerate to create new muscle cells. The aging process is not fun on the body. We lose muscle strength and flexibility because we are not able to repair damaged tissue quite as quickly when we are younger. Reflexes are slower and slow oxidative fibers numbers increase so we are able to have longer number of contraction longer time of contraction but we are not moving quite as fast and that is it for this chapter